in today's video, we're going to be diving into your official snowfall forecast for 2025 into 2026. We're going to be diving into your annual average amount of snowfall and then comparing it to our official snowfall chance forecast to give you an idea of if you could expect more or less than your average. Before we dive into things, be sure to comment your location down below, like the video, subscribe, and I will be giving you a custom forecast for your location as long as you do all three of those things. In addition to this, we have just uploaded our second and updated winter forecast a couple of days ago, and you can check that out on the top right corner of your screen. Let's go over the first layer here, and this is the no snow layer. Don't worry, we're going to add more to this, so not everybody in here is going to be seeing no snow, uh, but we're going to kind of increase it and go layer by layer. So let's go ahead and add our next layer, which is the up to three inches layer. Everybody that is still in that peach color on average does not expect to see snowfall every single year. The nearest areas to the gray area that are still in the peach maybe experience it every other year or every three years on average, but areas like South Florida or like Southwestern uh, California, areas like that or Southern Texas, these areas maybe experience it every hundred years or every thousand years. I don't know exactly what the averages are for everywhere, but it does vary within that peach layer. Let's go ahead and add the next one though, which is gonna clear things up a little bit. And this white area is your three to six inches on average every single year of snowfall, which means that your remaining gray areas are anywhere from a dusting or a trace amount all the way up to uh, right around three inches. So obviously the more Northern areas closer to the white are closer to that three inch mark and the areas in the gray, they're very close to the pink border are going to be right around experiencing a trace or dusting amount every single year. Let's add the next layer here, which is your six to 12 inches on average, every single year layer. The white band is very, very thin, but if you're in there again, it is three to six inches. Uh, and as we just continue to move up, we are going to add the 12 to 24 inches of snowfall layer here. Uh, so again, now we have these very thin bands of white there where it's three to six inches of snowfall. The thinner, or I guess less thin, light blue area, which is six to 12 inches of snowfall, still relatively thin, uh, but still half the nation here experiences about 12 to 24 inches of snowfall at least. So... Let's keep going and add in our 24 to 36 inch layer. And this is a good time to mention the West is particularly tough making these graphics. I try to make it as detailed and high definition as possible, but there will be some very, very small scale inaccuracies, especially related to elevation. And again, especially out West. So keep in mind that this map is not perfect and will probably be closer to perfect for areas in flatter locations like the central and for the most part, eastern states. I know there's some mountainous areas there. It's a little bit easier to forecast than the Rockies, Sierra Nevada and Cascades out west because they are kind of all over the place and very scattered. Uh, the Appalachian mountain range is a little bit more concise. It's a little easier uh, to predict but the remaining uh, darker blue area here is 24 to 36 inches of snowfall which I would argue is about still half the nation maybe just a little bit under it somewhere between 40 to 50 percent of the nation falls within that darker more navy blue area that now remains the more medium or true like ocean blue there again is your 12 to 24 inches uh, that now remains for lots of you know the central states here like kansas missouri into areas of southern illinois southern indiana southern ohio a lot of kentucky and tennessee in there much of the mid-atlantic as well uh, and again it's harder to break down out west let's go ahead and add our next layer which is the 36 to 48 inch region or i said should say regions because now there's uh three of them one here for a lot of the mountainous west into some of those plains just to the east of the Rockies. We do see a lot of the upper Midwest and Great Lakes in this area as well, where they experience at least 36 inches of snowfall. And then we can also see areas throughout, again, the Appalachian Mountain Range and other New England locations and New York State locations where they are also included in the 36 to 48 inches of 
snowfall. The remaining navy blue areas, it's almost darker than navy blue, uh, is going to be for a lot of those northern plains, some of like the central Midwest, like Iowa, southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois, northern Indiana, northern Ohio there, uh, and some of the not so mountainous areas in the east, but getting kind of hilly and higher elevation for most of these regions. Some of coastal southern New England as well in there. Let's add our next layer to this, and this is actually the second to last one. This is the 48 to 72 inches of snowfall. This is when we're getting really, really crazy with the amounts here. And we can see a lot of the mountainous west. It's just scattered about the Cascades, scattered about the Sierra Nevada mountain ranges there. And then also a lot of your higher elevations in the Rockies as well are all in this 48 to 72 inches of snowfall. Some of the extreme northern areas in the Great Lakes and Upper Midwest are also involved, like northern Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, uh, all of the upper peninsula of Michigan, and then I would say at least half of the lower peninsula of Michigan as well are in this 48 to 72 inches. A lot of these areas are aided by uh, lake effect snowfall as well, which contributes heavily to this. We could see, again, a lot of the higher elevation areas in the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast are included in this, even... Uh, some of just what I would call the hillier regions, like the Berkshires here in New England, uh, those are areas also included. And then anywhere that I would say is coastal is mostly exclusive for Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Maine there, where obviously they get hammered year after year after year. And finally, we have one more layer of the annual average snowfall, and that is going to be your 72 inches plus. There is many areas, especially high elevation regions, that average a lot higher than 72 inches into the hundreds. And that is going to be mostly for, again, your Cascade Mountain Ranges, Sierra Nevada, the Rockies there, as well as areas, again, very close to the lakes here in the Great Lakes, like Wisconsin, Michigan, and both peninsulas, a little bit of uh, Minnesota there as well. And then we can see some very high elevation locations here in the northeast and mid-Atlantic along the Appalachian Mountain Range. Some of the northern coast of Maine is in there, which is impressive because it's not necessarily high elevation. They just are so far to the north along the coast. They get large coastal systems all the time. And northern Maine, even the northern coast of Maine, oftentimes sees snowfall in situations where almost everybody else sees rainfall. It's pretty crazy. We can also see, again, these mountain ranges like the White Mountains, Green Mountains, uh, Adirondacks here, and then areas along the lakes there in Pennsylvania and New York where they get a ton of lake effect snowfall are also in this highest range, 72 inches plus. This is really, really the overachievers here in these red areas. With all of that being said, that's just your averages like we said. Let's dive into the compared to averages. This is from our most recent winter forecast, which again, you can check out today. We uploaded it a couple of days ago. It's going to have the full temperature, precipitation, snowfall, and overall forecasts all included in that video. It was a very detailed one. And here is our snowfall chance forecast. It's important to differentiate this from your standard snowfall anomalies forecast. We're not trying to forecast, you know, that these areas will for sure see below or above average snowfall. That's far too difficult. And there's a lot of contributing factors outside of just precipitation and temperatures, which are mainly the things that we can try to predict this early on. But timing is a big one you know are you going to see the cold air and dry and then it warms up and then it's wet all of a sudden because you could have below average temperatures and above average precipitation and still end up with below average snowfall because of timing so we're going to go over the snowfall chance forecast which tries to use the precipitation and temperatures but again timing could disrupt this this is mostly just based on who has the better chances of snowfall throughout the season compared to normal and who has the worst chances and this year we really expect the southwest to be in that below average snowfall chance uh, primarily. And that's because we are likely going to be in a weak La Nina. And if not, we will be kind of in the middle ground, which we call a neutral Enso, more on the side of the La Nina. And typically, these kind of shut down the storm track that you might see heading through the southwest in an El Nino. We're not going to be in an El Nino or really very close at all. So this storm track kind of gets shut down. Typically, we get more storms moving in through the northwest and then moving down into more of the central states, bringing more snow to the northwest and northern plains and upper Midwest, as opposed to the southwest here. So that's why we have this. This is our first shade 
We do have a second shade of this as well, where we are just more confident in this for areas in California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico. There is a lot of mountainous areas in here, and you saw how high their averages are. So even if they see below average snowfall, it still is a lot more than most of the nation sees, even on a slower year. So keep that in mind as well. This does not mean they will not see snowfall, just a little bit less of a chance than they would typically see. Looking at our third layer here, we could see more southwest locations the further southwest you are i think the less chances you have here so uh, we just have that third layer of confidence out of five here for the below average snowfall chance as we kind of navigate into the above average snowfall chance we can see a lot of the northwest and then pretty much everywhere east of the rockies we do expect spoiler alert if you're going to watch that winter forecast but we do expect below average temperatures for most of the central and eastern states and that's usually enough to just bring an above average snowfall chance. We know these warmer winters typically feature almost everybody seeing below average snowfall. And these colder winters oftentimes are just going to bring above average snowfall chances as a whole. Because if it's too warm, it doesn't matter if there's precipitation or not. Uh, but if it's cold enough, that's just going to lead to more opportunities when storms do come around that it will be cold enough. Um, that's why in the east, the temperatures are going to play a bigger role. And in the west, the mountainous west especially, precipitation is going to play more of a role because oftentimes in these mountaintop locations, it will be cold enough regardless of if it's warmer or colder than normal. So precipitation is much of a bigger role out there in the west. We do have a second layer of this as well, and it is going to be pretty exclusive for areas east of the Rockies. Again, far below normal temperatures, just going to bring uh, far above normal snowfall chances as a whole. We even have our third shade of this, again, for most areas in the central and eastern states. I've explained enough of why this is, uh, but that is what we are predicting. And we are even further confident in some of these areas in the northern plains, the upper Midwest, uh, the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes, as well as the northern mid-Atlantic into New England and the rest of the northeast here. This is our four out of five confidence on this above normal snowfall chance. And the reason for this is because, again, everywhere in the central and eastern states, for the most part, we do expect below normal temperatures, but we do expect above normal precipitation for these northern locations. When you see above normal precipitation, below normal temperatures, that just has to give you an above normal snowfall chance, right? The areas in the deep south and into the southeast, we do expect average to slightly below average precipitation, and that is why they do not join in on this fourth layer it's even more favorable to the north compared to normal of course that is it for this video guys again be sure to like the video subscribe hit the bell icon and leave a comment down below with your location not only so that you see our awesome videos but also so that i can go into as many of those and give you guys a more custom snowfall chance forecast in uh, a response to your comments so be sure to do all of those things we upload every single day so be sure to check those out as well daily. We have our uh, when to expect your first snowfall video, which is highly related to this one, coming out very soon as well. So be on the lookout for that one. With all that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.